feel like it's something that really was birthed through this congregation and these people and, and um, the teachings. And so I'm just honored to be able to just kind of present them. And I hope that they bless you. And Lord, I just hope that you would uh, come and meet each other, Lord. Where we need your touch and where we need to see you. Please come, Lord, and just be here with us. This is about you, Lord. And what you've done through this one man's life, Lord. He put us on this earth. We were created to worship him and to bring him glory. And let's just do that a little bit. Hold your ears a second. Here we go.
This is 
song that this is the only one I actually co-wrote on this album. It was from an old friend of mine. It uh, just we were close to spirit and just had one night together. We we're just hanging out in a little worship group and team, and he had this idea and I had some ideas, and we just came up with this song. It's out of Psalm 62, and I think it speaks to those dark nights of our souls. When things are too hard to really grasp or understand or digest, we feel scared, alone, maybe forsaken. Just know that he's a refuge in those times. God is a refuge for us. God is a refuge for us. God is a refuge
mine. And uh, life was going good, though. I, I had a beautiful wife, my wife Sheila, two wonderful daughters, just little at that time. I was driving a, a big truck, a 150 Ford van, home from a little birthday party we had for my niece, who was, I think, four at the time. And my little one, Kara, who's here tonight, Kara. And um, she was like one and a half, two years old, in a little car seat. And um, I was driving on the road. It's not a main road, but it was such a quiet town. And there was a semi parked right, at, right in the like, side of the intersection with lights on. It. Really not a good idea to do that. But anyway, I was passing him in the left lane. But unbeknownst to me and this little boy, um, this little nine-year-old boy came running right in front of that semi-truck. And I hit him full blast 40, 45 miles an hour. And then just saw him flying um, above, above and 30 feet down the road or whatever. You can imagine my heart. I was, it just stopped. And luckily Kara was sleeping at the time. And so I pulled over the car to the you know, van and I jumped out and Went down and looked at the this little boy who's laying you know, lifeless on the road. And I saw serious brain trauma, head trauma. You know, I just knew he was either dead or going to die in a minute. And, uh, of course, my life went 180. And like I said, life was good. I was, I was, you know, I thought I had my own little arrangement with God. You know, and at least that was enough to ward off all the people trying to get me to church and my family, um, friends, but right there I realized that I, and actually all of us, have nothing that we control on this earth. Every, every second is held by God's hand, and I prayed that this little boy wasn't over here on the earth. And anyway, I got back home, and I was surrounded by my family, my uh, mom and dad, some of these friends that have friends of mine that have just been coaxing us to come back to church and all that. But anyway, we prayed. We prayed hard for that little boy. But in my heart, I knew he was beyond help. And, but we prayed and we prayed. And I was wrong, thank God. The next day, we finally got information from his aunt who he lived with. He didn't really have a bunch of a family. And she said, he's doing great. And, and God did something because I saw what I saw and when I heard that I knew God was in the midst of this and me and this space and anyway he was he was released three days later from the hospital was able to get back to his sports he was a real sports kid and uh, he was actually lifting weights and they could help him but he was lifting weights and he could get back they said in another week he it was a miracle. God did it. I praise him for it. Changed uh, his, that little boy's life and mine. His, his aunt was praying too. So I just thank God for that. Of course, like I say, it was a one of those bright light revelation, you know, salvations, but it really wasn't. Um, I still had a lot of journeying to do to kind of get things off of me and clear to really accept Christ, and I didn't really have much strength to do that that time, and if you don't mind, I'll tell you a little bit more story. But I went to this little church, these people that prayed for me that night that this all happened, there, there was a, a few of our friends that went there, and they said, why don't you come to this little church, and, I, and we kind of said, okay, we kind of, they wore us out. So we went, and it was a kind of a crazy little church, to be honest, especially the first time. But um, something happened to me there, as I sat in the back, I remember the, the preacher, so just a little church, maybe 25, 30 people, and he said, if anybody needs a touch of the Holy Spirit, just ask them. Just ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. And I was up for that. In my heart, I said, yes, yes, I need a, I'm striving to, to be more of a Christian, but it just wasn't really, it wasn't real for me. You know, not real enough. So I asked him, and sure enough, the Holy Spirit, whatever, however you want to 
line of oil of the Lord just I felt it pour down from the top of my head slowly to, to my feet. And I was never the same again after that. That was what I needed. And God just touched me. I couldn't get enough Bible reading. Couldn't get to church often enough. And just transformed me. And I've hungered and thirsted for him all my life since. And I just praise the Lord. Let's give him a praise for just if nothing else.
forever find the words to say how much I love you. I can't sing the song that's sweet enough. But that's a dance that ever brings enough. Shout your praises loud enough to say. Thank you. 
she's not here tonight. She couldn't be, but but she was really uh, been a big help to this church and just with all her knowledge. And I want to thank her. And she also helped me do the graphics on the CD, so that was really a big help to me. Not really great. It's Scott too. Scott's the baker, kind of a self, self. Uh, <laughs> he's one who just brings us up. He doesn't ask anything. He just shows up with baked goods. It's just an amazing guy, right? So we can thank him. And it's always good. That's you know, on top of that, it's really good. He bakes it all himself. And he's made some cupcakes and some desserts for us and cookies and stuff. So after we're done, you're welcome to move. I'll be outside here. I think that's it, except for the most important. Of all, and that's my wife. She loved uh, my steadfast and since walking all day before we both remotely knew Jesus, and, and she's just always been my best fan and encouraged me and really encouraged this whole project. She actually contacted Chris and said, Hey, Chris, you know, could you put, help out put together a CD? So, anyway, I thank you, honey. I love you. Oh, oh, oh. 